Welcome back to our second special edition on Peru's Circus City Festival 2016. Tonight's edition is about the Circus Hall of Fame. The International Circus Hall of Fame is located 4 miles east of Peru, Indiana. The address is 3076 East Circus Lane, just off of State Road 124, Miami County Monthly News stopped by the Hall of Fame to take a tour and interview the Hall of Fame's Board of Directors President, Jack Reinaman. While we were there, we were also able to get a short interview with Rick Wallenda of Wallenda Enterprises who happened to stop by to visit the museum. We were also able to visit with clown, Pat Kelly, as well as get video of one of the most famous circus wagons in the world, the Two Hemispheres. The Two Hemispheres will be part of the circus parade this Saturday. We would like to thank Jeff King for providing us with some aerial video of the property. We're here with Jack Reinemann. It looks like you're getting ready to get the wagons ready for the parade this weekend, huh? Yes, we are. Uh, we provide a portion of them to the Circus City Festival Parade, one of the better parades in Indiana. And being it's a circus parade, we have a number of circus wagons that they do not, uh, many of them being historical and some being recreations. So what can you tell us about the, the property out here at the, the, the Hall of Fame? The Circus Hall of Fame sits on property that has been uh, pretty much in the circus since uh, 1895 uh, before that it was Indian property and by the Miami Indians in 1895 uh, Ben Wallace who started circus in Peru uh, finally got Gabriel Godfroy the local Indian Miami chief to sell this property uh, it's between the two rivers the Mississippi and the Wabash and it comprises some 230 acres thereabouts. Uh, it has been circus since that point uh, continually until 1944 when it was sold to the Schramm family and run as a just a grain farm until 1991 uh, when the Circus Hall of Fame uh, brought uh, their collection out here. The Hall of Fame has been in Peru since 1985 and uh, was a continuation of what was uh, started in 1958 in Sarasota, Florida. All right, so uh, can you take us in and show us a little bit what's inside the Hall of Fame? Uh, all right. The one thing I didn't say yet is that uh, this piece of property, we, have, we currently own 10.4 acres out of the 230. We are a national historic landmark, as said uh, by the Department of Interior in from since 1987, we are one of 65 National Historic Landmarks in the state. Uh, that means that whenever we do anything here, the outsides of the buildings have to look like a building that was here. We can't just put up a, a glass structure or a steel structure somewhere on the property. It has to look like what was here because of the national significance to the United States. All right, let's go take a look inside. All right, so this is actually the Circus Hall of Fame. A lot of circus memorabilia in yes. here, and uh, you're gonna be open the Circus Week. We're open Circus Week. We're already open now from 10 until four daily, uh, except during parade day, which will be after, I imagine, noon or two o'clock after the parade's over, and they start, start bringing the wagons back out. Um, so I said, there's, there usually are people around here. We ask a donation of $5 per person for, to come through the museum and uh, this week Pat Kelly, uh, Emma Kelly's son will be here
for uh, the duration. He's been our clown here for over 20 years, so he'll be doing meet and greets and uh, taking care of people. Hi. Uh, what we are showing now is this is the listing of all the people who are in the Circus Hall of Fame. The uh, Hall of Fame started at the first induction in 1958 with Miss Lillian Leitzel. Uh, it goes on through today. Uh, next week on the 22nd, we will induct Barry Lubin, who is Grandma, his character, as the clown on the Big Apple Circus. And he will be here to accept this, along with last year's inductee, uh, Stroopy Hannaford, whose daughter is coming in her stead because Stroopy passed away a year ago. Uh, each, uh, the Circus Hall of Fame is made up of people who are deemed uh, significant to the circus, be they uh, performers or owners or anything like that. Uh, they are picked by a group of circus professionals uh, located throughout the world who uh, can uh, who decide if this person is worthy of being inducted and then a second group actually votes on who is included. And anyone can nominate someone for the Circus Hall of Fame, uh, but this group decides if they are indeed going to be part of it. So this side room here, you say is like yeah, climate controlled, it's got more... Yeah, this is the primary part of the museum. Uh, it's climate controlled, and so thus some of the things are they're better taken care of. You know, this is where things like oil paintings and costumes and the like are uh, kept because it shows that it takes better care of them and we're able to show them off. Uh, each of the blue plaques in these uh, cases are people who are inductees. This is a model of the 1934 Hagenbach Wallace Show as it left Peru, Indiana, and how it was set up. This was built by a board member of the Hall of Fame uh, who has since passed, Mr. Tom Dunwoody. He started on this at age 14 and was still working on it at the time of his death at age 74. Uh, he made all this. Everything that you see in this is verifiable by photograph. So if you see uh, a certain wagon or one of these tents, you know, 25 elephants, he has proof to show that this is correct. You enter, entered the show, you had a side show at the beginning, entered into the main tent of the circus, and came into the menagerie tent. And the menagerie tent is where all of the animals were kept beforehand. And as you'll see through the back here, it was the camels, the zebras, the cats, the elephants, and uh, one of the main concession areas. So it makes it up, you know, it just shows how it was set up and what was going on. A lot of these wagons were built in Peru, Indiana by the Sullivan and Eagle Company, which was down on Canal. And uh, they provide a lot of product. And this shows how everything was set up. And then after you went through the menagerie tent, you went across uh, a divide to the big tent on the backside, which we can see in a few minutes, which shows where the actual circus happened. Uh, on the back, which is called the back lot, are several tents that show how they did the things as uh, the circus was set up. You know, they had a practice ring, you had your dressing rooms, men and women's dressing room, you had a place for the equestrian, for the horse stock, you also had places in the back for other things like that to keep the horses ready for the different pieces, uh, people getting ready to come in and do the, the circus. Uh, you had your dining tent and the way everything's in because, you know, you've got it. 1,200, 1,300 employees, you have to feed them. So that was a big thing too, that you know that they fed and did everything they needed to do. You just don't have circuses like this anymore, period. No, you do not. Uh, you have circuses, but not like circuses, this. Not like this. These are, there's nothing of this size anymore, which is a shame because circus is probably the best, most wholesome family entertainment there is. You don't have to worry about seeing something you don't want to see or hearing words you don't want to hear. It's all about showing what you can do with uh, training of an animal, which all the training is the things they do are things they do in the wild. They're not forced to do anything that they don't already do. You know, uh, and you've got uh, the different uh, acts, you know, showing feats of human endurance, uh, 
you know, walking across the wire seven people high like the Wallendas do, or uh, tr working with the big cats like Clyde Beatty did. I mean, there's just many, many things that make it just as fascinating. Um, it just works out very, very well. They had uh, this whole thing traveled by rail in several sections, and the circus, they could load and unload and do this show every day. They tried to have more time, you know, four or five days at a place because they go to the bigger towns. But if they had to go to a small one, they could put it up and down in one day. So then they came here to the and during the winter quarters and, the winter and, and, here and did maintenance and maintenance, built new things, decided what wagons went with what show because there were five shows that came out of this property. So some year, so one year a wagon may be on Sells Floto and painted that way. The next year it may be on Hagenback Wallace or on Howells Great London. It just depended on what show they needed that particular piece for. Okay. Uh, this shows a typical mock town because when the circus came to town, they did a parade. And the parade showed people what kind of wonders and great things were going on. And typically, it let people come down to the circus to see what was happening. Uh, because you must remember back in the 20s and 30s, people didn't run around like we do now. You, know, you couldn't get anywhere in the world in 24 hours. It took a while. And a lot of people never left uh, their county. You know, they stayed in the same county they were born in, they never moved. So this was a big deal. They actually closed schools when the circus came to town. And a show like this would work anywhere from one day, which they tried not to do, to, you know, a week or more at a bigger community. Um, and again, we show the things like, here's the back lot, and you can see how they had the dining area where they took care of everybody, and the kitchen, and how they kind of did the things. And again, you know, they had, uh, they had wagons that were full of ice to keep their meat cold and things of that nature. You know, they had, uh, you know, the, the wagons coming along the side here, like, because this would have been the back side of the tent, where, it should, where the things like held the uh, canvas and things like that that were up in the air. Here again, you can see several acts that they put in for the three rings where they'd have different things going on. And then they also had what they called a speck, which is the parade that went around the inside which showed off some more things that were not necessarily seen in the parade. All right, this is a really neat model here. Let's take a look at a few more things you've got in the, in the circus. Okay. okay. Included in our collection of things are uh, some things like by Miles White, who was the uh, great designer of costumes. For here you see a pieces made for the uh, spec when they put on a horse the horse could see it and they have pictures of it and what it was in. Uh, these are all in the 50s. Uh, this from 1952 in fact. Uh, we talk about Cecil B. the Mill. We show other costumes. We show the ringmaster's costume from Harold Ronk. Uh, talk about you know uh, circus animals things like that. So there's many many things here at the Hall of Fame uh, to see in different interests for people. And then you never know who you're going to see here. I mean, there's always a, a circus personality that comes through, and they're all welcome here in Peru. We like to have them. We like to get their expertise, to hear their stories, and uh, to generally see how we can help each other. Because uh, I hate to say it, in some ways circus is a dying art, and I hate to see that. I mean, there's just there's so many wonderful things and so many things you can see uh, because of circus. They're just a, it's a great, great, uh, again, thing that happens. It's uh, the best entertainment value for your dollar, any bar none in my book. This is a model at the Hall of Fame of a hitch of 40 horses, four wide, 10 deep, pulling the two hemisphere bandwagon, which was built in 1896 by James Bailey. Uh, for in, in New York City for his return of his shows from Europe back to the United States. Uh, it is the largest circus wagon ever built, uh, 28 feet long, 10 feet high, 8 feet wide, uh, solid wood, weighs about 7 tons, and to most people it's the holy grail of circus wagons. It is the best wagon to have. Uh, this is the two hemisphere bandwagon. You saw the model of it earlier. 
Uh, this is the first time in 2016 that it's ever been in Peru, Indiana. Uh, it is, will be paraded this sun, Saturday, the 23rd of July, uh, at the Circus City Festival Parade, and pulled by a team of six. It's still the most magnificent wagon ever built, built in New York City, and it is phenomenal. It is owned by a board member of the Circus Hall of Fame, Mr. Peter Gorman who purchased it from auction here earlier this year. But it is a magnificent piece. Uh, one side shows the Western Hemisphere, the other side the Eastern Hemisphere, with the eagles on the front, lions, bears on the sides, along with the globe with the respective hemispheres, and on the back, elephants with crossed uh, trunks. Okay, this side, uh, which would be the left side if you're looking at it, uh, has the eastern hemisphere. And it shows the, you know, the other half of the world. But it has uh, like flags and seals, symbols of uh, Italy, Germany, Austria, Russia, France, and England. The United States and Canada um, and some of the others are on the other side. A lot of detail. It is, and it's all hand carved. You know, they didn't have machines to do this back then. It was done by master wood carvers. That is a uh, big wagon. Typically, it holds a band. Uh, I'm not sure about this week. I know there'll be a few uh, guests of Mr. Gorman on it. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a magnificent piece. So they can come out and see it out here at the... They can come out and see it at the, the Circus Hall of Fame. And then... Museum, uh, through Friday. And it'll be in town on Saturday for the parade and through the parade route and then be brought back out after that and I'm sure put back out here for the time being. Uh, it'll be here until the fall as far as I understand. Um, it's going to go into a climate control, control place for the winter. Uh, this part of the museum is not climate controlled because we are working out of a barn and the barns are what uh, created or what were left of the Hall of Fame. Okay, uh, we, I talked about earlier about you never know who you'll find at the Circus Hall of Fame. Today we have with us Ricky Wallenda, one of the famous Wallenda flying troupe who is still performing to, to this day. Uh, uh, his mother still performs, as does his children. And he's through here in Peru, and we'll kind of let Ricky tell you a little bit of his story. Thank you. What would you like me to talk about? Well, what brings you to Peru today? Just, you know, uh, looking, looking and we're, stopping we're, at the museum and... We're passing through Peru. Uh, there's, I have a girl in my troop who is from Peru and she wanted to come home. She has a brand new baby and grandma was pressuring her to come home so the baby could spend some time here. And uh, we're, we're leaving on Tuesday morning, a couple days from now, to head up to Michigan. We're going to be performing in New Hudson, Michigan, uh, an event called, they're calling Summerfest. And my mother's going to join us there. She's 80 years old. She's going to do the sway pole for us. And Charlie and I and another guy are going to do the high wire. And uh, there's going to be another girl joining us from Peru also. Her name is Macy. I can't remember her last name. But she'll be joining us. She's not going to do high wire. She's going to do one of our smaller aerial turns. And uh, um, we like recruiting from this show here. Brit Brittany Wallach does a good job of training the people. And so we like to recruit for high wire from here and any of the other things too. I'll train them in sway pole also if they want to learn that act. And uh, we're going to go up there and we're going to do about a 30 minute show called Zirkus Wallenda, Z-I-R-K-U-S, the old German spelling for the word. So you've got a few artifacts related to, to your family in here, correct? Yeah, my family has been very much involved in the Circus Hall of Fame and uh, this, this pedestal over here is, was in use but I'm trying to figure out when and, and how to date it. I, I really don't know how I can date it um, without having my mother here to help me out a little bit. And this photograph, uh, there are some of the originals in there. Uncle Arthur was the original back man of the pyramid, and Uncle Herman and my grandfather in that position, that was the original configuration. But the three front men, I cannot identify this far away. It doesn't look like it's the original ones who were Uncle Gunther, Uncle Philip, and Joe Geiger. 
and my Aunt Yeti on the top. That was the original configuration that they did in 1947. All right. Well, thanks for your time. It's nice to have you in Miami County here to checking out the museum. It's a pleasure to be able to come through here. All right. We're here with Deb Benke from Illinois, and she's uh, running the uh, gift shop this week. What can you tell us about the gift shop and yourself here? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm from Illinois, and my husband and I come in for about a week, a week and a half, to help set up for the parade. And then we're open during that week with the museum, and we have the gift shop open. And all the items that we have, the profits that we make, help support the museum. And we have books, we have paintings, we have some porcelain clowns, we have a lot of children's items because they love to come. And we have t-shirts. And just a little bit of everything. And if somebody would like something else, all they have to do is ask and we'll see what we can find. A lot of clowns in here. Yeah. Any real ones? Yes. And then we always have Pat Kelly, who's from Peru. He lives in Peru. Yeah. And he's our famous clown. And he's an artist also. So he does, um, we have a book that he puts in, but I'll show you some of the artwork that he does. And he donates that to help support the museum also. Yeah. Here's one that he just did. I'll let you hold that. Here's a cartoon work. So here. Nice. Yeah. A self portrait? Uh, yeah, not myself. Yeah, it's a cartoon work. And you're related to Emmett Kelly? Emmett Kelly, but I'm not. I'm not Jerry Kelly. I'm not Paul Kelly. All my were kids. They, I, I live here at Trail Park, Peru, and they, they moved away from me. Emmett Kelly Jr. and uh, Joey Kelly, he's my nephew. And Emmett Jr., my brother, he's my brother. I only had two boys. Uh, Emmett Jr. is the older one, and I'm the second one, so there's two. So I live here, and they moved, they don't live. Emmett Jr., well, he passed away, but Joey Kelly, Paul, and all, and all, I don't know, they don't live here at all. So that's, that's what I, I wouldn't yep. create now because I asked the question. I mean, and that's I just shake at people that I'm Pat Kelly. And, and then, he'll be in the circus. Yeah. He'll be in the parade. Yeah, I'll be in the parade. On the Betty Cutler floor. Division three. All right. So, well, this guy do cartoon work. All right. So, and one right. of the things this year we're having is a chance that a family of uh, they you know they pay for a chance and then the mayor on Friday will be drawing and they'll be able to ride with Pat in the parade on Saturday. Oh, what an honor! Yes, yeah. yes. All right. Well, thank you for your time. I thank you.